One of the most exciting new features of macOS Sequoia 15.2 is the integration of ChatGPT right into the system. But it never comes without some controversy and unanswered questions. If you open system settings and go in ChatGPT, you will find there are quite a lot of settings and these daily limits for advanced capabilities. So how should I set it up? What this limit mean and what happens if I somehow go over the limit? And one more very important question. How much better is the standard ChatGPT 4.0 version over the basic 4.0 mini? And do I really need a subscription to ChatGPT Plus? Let's try to answer all of these questions in this video. But first of all, let me demonstrate you how this integration works and how to set it up. So start by going to System Settings, go to Apple Intelligence and Siri, and down here click on ChatGPT. Interesting thing is that by default, this is actually disabled. So first, switch this toggle on top to activate it. You can also sign in to your ChatGPT account, but it is not required in order to use it on the Mac. So now I have it all set up in here and I can use Siri to type the request. I'll do it through the menu bar, but you can also just double click on the command key to activate Siri. Now I can type the question, but if it's a little bit more complex question what Siri cannot answer, it will consult it with ChatGPT. Actually first, it will ask me to give a permission to talk to ChatGPT. This is a very simple question I just typed there. But if I want to push ChatGPT a little bit more, I can add at the end of this question step by step instruction. This prompt should be already enough for Siri to be switching over ChatGPT. So here is your answer. But if you ask more Mac related questions, then Siri will try to push herself and answer it instead of using ChatGPT. For example, how to clean space on iCloud. But here, as you can see, you are just getting links to some different articles, Apple support or videos, which are relevant to this topic, but you're actually not getting any answers. In this case, I can force ChatGPT to be answering my question and you can do it quite easily. Simply type first ChatGPT and then you can type the same question as we did before. So the biggest difference between ChatGPT and Siri is that it will actually pull out the informations from all of these articles and videos and give you the real answers. Unlike Siri, which just gives you the links to the places where you can find it yourself. And these are really simple requests and simple questions. I would say that's the top of the iceberg what ChatGPT can really do. It can, for example, watch your screen and you can ask what is on my screen and get some analysis on your data or photos. You can upload their different attachments, ask more complex questions. And there are also these writing tools which are already in built in basic macOS applications in Pages, Notes app or Mail app. So you can make ChatGPT to work with your text in many different levels. It's quite complex and there are a lot of different capabilities what it can do. So I don't want to spend so much time on that in this video. But if you are interested in this topic or in macOS in general, I recommend you to subscribe to the channel because there will be a lot more content relevant to this topic coming in the near future. What I want to focus in this video are the questions I have asked in the beginning and they are all connected to this small note in system settings, these daily limits in advanced capabilities. To be clear right from the beginning, let's say you go over the limit, what will happen? Not so much, you will just be degraded from the standard 4.0 version of ChatGPT into the more basic version, so you will not lose access to ChatGPT completely. You will just be in that basic version. And you will stay on this basic level for less than 24 hours, then it will be automatically upgraded back up. But what is the daily limit and how to measure it is quite unclear, because it can be measured in many different ways. It can be requests per minute, requests per day, or it can also be measured in tokens. So for example, tokens per minute, how many tokens spent per day. Maybe you can be sending 20 different requests for under 100 tokens in the whole day. Or maybe you can request very complex analysis of your data, which was spent in just few minutes. So this will be different for everyone. But honestly, the need of these advanced capabilities on a daily basis 
are very, very low. And I think that for the majority of people, the basic mini model will be good enough and you will not even see any difference. But what are actually the differences between the mini and standard versions of ChatGPT? They are not so big. Of course, if you ask the complex question to the standard ChatGPT 4.0, then you will get a lot more complex and longer answer than the standard mini version. But essentially, the end result will be pretty much the same. You will always get the right answers even from the basic model. And it's even faster because it's not searching for all of these complex answers and complex analysis. So according to my opinion, it's better to just stick to the basic version and don't worry about these daily limits at all. Of course, if you are asking the hundreds of questions a day, you are uploading a lot of attachments and requesting some complicated response, then maybe you might be better with the subscription to ChatGPT+. It costs only $20 and I believe you will not find any better virtual assistant which is actually useful. But you can find a lot of useful information everywhere else. Even in this channel I believe you can find a lot of information here and I guarantee you that the subscription here will always be for free. Just by clicking on one button you can get all of that. And in the case you have already subscribed then I will see you in the next video.